start with importing this and read it carefully because this is what they had in mind when creating this beautiful language. List comprehension, a very simple concept yet often unused. Let's say we have a list of 10 million integers and say we want to square them. Junior approach would be to create an empty list then iterating over the original list with a for loop and then squaring each value and storing it in the new list. Which works just fine but first of all you've got three lines of code here instead of one which you could have had with list comprehensions. Secondly, this works slightly slower. As you can see list comprehension works almost twice faster and with more complicating logic this is going to be noticed. And if you indeed want to pack some more complicating logic into here, then you can create just a separate function, the squared value divided by 15 plus 1 multiplied by 111 divided by 2. So if you put this logic into the list comprehension or to the for loop, this is going to be an unreadable mess. And with list comprehension and a function, you can just apply this function to every element of the list and it would do all the magic for you. And you can do this with dictionaries as well. Simple yet powerful technique that will make your code more readable, cleaner, smaller and run faster. But as Zen of Python told us, simple is better than complicating. Since this is a numpy array, you could have done just list squared and it would square all the values in a list instantly. Use built-in Python counter instead of creating your own. So let's say you're iterating over some object and you want to keep track of the count. So, for example, print something every 100 iteration. So the newbie approach would be creating a counter variable, setting it to zero, and then when iterating, incrementing a number to this counter. It is extra work, and you are demonstrating that you don't know the Python capabilities, and there are so many more functions built in, so the easier approach would be just to use the enumerate, and in the index variable here, you have all your indexes saved, and the last one will be the end of your counter. Extracting a value from the dictionary based on its key. A very common operation, you can see this in just about any Python script. But if the key does not exist, your program is going to throw an error. And maybe this one small line of code is a part of a big program, which will result in the whole project to crash. A much better approach is to use the built-in dictionary get method and ask for a key. And if this key does not exist, return some default value. In this case, if the key does not exist, you will not have an error and your program will keep running. And your result variable will be set to the value of whatever you set here. Maybe this is going to be an, a zero or a none or some code that is going to tell your program that the, the key was not found. Error handling is a very important concept and many developers at the start of their career think that their programs are going to run flawlessly, but in reality they don't. And when you encounter an error, your program crashes. What you want to do is to catch that error, handle it, execute some logic when the error is spotted and continue running your program. First of all, you wrap it into the try and accept block and you can catch specific errors, just like in this case, zero division error. If you think or if you know that this is the only error that can occur and then assign result to something else and continue running your program, whatever code you have following. But uh, in this particular case, this may not be the only error because B could be not zero, but it could be a string or a boolean or something else which you cannot use in the division operation. Here you might want to try the more generic exception, which indeed is called exception. Assign result to something, like no result for example. And for instance print your error. And it's going to print the error here in the console for you, as you can see division by zero. But this is not informative. Division by zero, well if you have here five lines of code, okay you can handle this, but if you have a thousands of lines of code and different modules and different folders, you're going to be looking for that. So the much better option would be to use a logging method, which is going to show you the whole stack trace of the error and where it happened. You can use the logging error message. All right, so exception occurred. This is what we typed here and it's going to show you where exactly it's in line two, exactly right here. And you can even you know save your login to the file if you have logging all over your program. The next one is really important and it's not just one small thing, but more of a development culture code modularity or in other words avoid creating really long functions that do many different things so let's say we have this long function that's not very complicating but it does so many things so first of all it checks the boolean argument and if the boolean argument is true it's going to take list one then square it then take list two then square it and take this list and then take a square root out of every value and then take the other list and take the square root out of every value 
and then it would add these lists element-wise together. These are all simple operations and this is more or less easy to read, but I just want to demonstrate the concept that you should not be crumbling many different operations into one function. Better yet, split this into many small functions and execute them whenever you need them. Say you want to change something in this function, like maybe the power of these operations here, then you would have to go in here and repeat yourself and more frequently you'll make errors. Any operation that is repeated throughout your code should be placed as a single function and when you have to change this operation then you're gonna have to go only into that single function and implement your changes there. So this is the repeating operation. Let's make a function for this. We'll call it square. Now instead of all these code in here, all we're gonna need is just two lines of code. Now let's do the square root function and now we can change the rest of this code and there may be many other places in your code where this function can be used and if you want to make it real clean so let's just do the addition function this already looks much better and we can now change the name of this function to main instead of spaghetti function but we can still improve this because basically the square and the root functions do the same thing only they have a different power so let's just make one function and pass a parameter power in there and now you can change your boolean true false argument to the power argument we've got a small mistake here so we've got a power function and a power argument so let's say power val and if we compare this to the original code well see for yourself so this is gonna have to make you think much harder to trying to understand this and uh, looking at this you have three simple functions and a very easy logic and it just looks much better. This modular approach does not only make it shorter or easier to read but it also improves testing and debugging and reusability. You'd be surprised how many times when creating a long script you can duplicate your code and then make mistakes in one of them and then when you have to change something you forgot to change it in the other place. If you adopt this from the very beginning you will not run into these problems as you go along. Always write documentation for your code. How many times have I stumbled upon the code written by somebody that's been long gone from the team or maybe my code written years ago without any documentation whatsoever. Especially if the code base does not follow this modular approach that we've been discussing. Having to go line after line through the spaghetti code trying to understand what's happening there is really time consuming. In many cases for a very small change you're gonna have to spend half an hour or maybe an hour trying to figure out which functions follows which, what do they do and how are they connected. If all of them were documented properly you would just browse through the documentation quickly implement your fix and thank the developer that wrote it. Do yourself a favor, document your code. In fact, start with making documentation for any function and only then implement that function. These simple concepts barely scratch the surface, but Python programmers run into them with just about every program they develop. One little thing at a time, over time, will compound into better programs, bulletproof code and career development.